Well, I'm on the farm today, and I want to talk just a little bit about the uh, Farm All 350 and uh, what my future plans are for it. Uh, probably over the course of the next couple of years. Uh, you know, nothing drastic, but uh, first thing, uh, let's see if we can get it to start. Pull it out here in the sun. It's a beautiful day on the farm, and uh, so I just thought I'd uh, bring this thing out in the sun where I can talk about it. Okay, uh, so some of the things I want to do is uh, the number one observation with this tractor other than it looks straight and original is these front tires are set so wide they're as wide as they can go and it appears to me that what they've done is they uh, just took the tire off the the, 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 the the tire fits on the rim it bolts on to the rim or the rim bolts on to the to here and it appears what they've done they've just taken the tire and flipped it like that and that pushed it all the way out and so what I need to do is take it off and flip it back to the inside and I've looked at some diagrams in the manual I do have the operating and parts manual for these things in fact I got a whole set of manuals I got more manuals for this tractor and I know what to do with but I got them so I want to set those back in uh, a little easier on the steering, but I think it looks more like a farm all with the wheels closer together. I uh, don't have any plans on painting this thing. I kind of like it in its uh, work clothes. Uh, maybe someday we might get there and do that. Uh, but for right now, I just like it as a work tractor. I don't know why, but... I'm sure these are better fenders than the original fenders that just came straight up on the HM, Super H, Super M, 300, 350, 400, 450 farm alls. But it bugs me when I see a picture of this tractor and I got this curvature on these fenders. So uh, I want to try to snag a pair of fenders that are period correct uh, for this uh for this tractor and I think that the HM in the 100 series 300 400 350 450 and this obviously the Super H Super M I think those uh, fenders will all bolt up uh, to this like I say this is probably a better fender probably keeps more mud off but I don't know that's one thing that's kind of near and dear to me more so really than those uh, front wheels. And I've been told that the reason people will set these wheels out is uh, because of mud. And uh, if they're picking corn with it, sometimes these tractors would have a mounted corn picker. And uh, I guess the front wheels would just get mired up in mud. And uh, so, uh, anyway, I want to set them back in. The next thing I need to do is uh, the power steering on this tractor is just wonderful. It's just, it just really, really nice. And, uh, but it's got a factory uh, Bellin uh, power steering, they call it a generator, that's in line in the shaft coming down through here. I've got a video I'm working on I've had, this, I've had this hood off because uh, I wanted to look at the, the generator on here and uh, I've got some 6 volt, 12 volt questions but i got videos on that uh, coming but uh, that, if you're familiar with these tractors that generator, that, it's called a torque generator uh, it's leaking on this side of the, uh, the shaft so I need to take that off. I've got the service manual uh, for it, and uh, I may do the repair, or I may send it to somebody that's done a hundred of these uh, Bellum units. But I want it 
uh, right because uh, it's just really nice power steering, you know, when you're backing up to an implement, sitting still like this, it's nice just to spin that wheel. And it, my John Deere uh, uh, tractor, you've seen in my other videos, it's got really easy fingertip power steering. That's exactly how this one is, and I want that. Uh, the next thing, and uh, the next thing is, I want to try to find some fast hitch implements. I'd love to be able to find a, a two or three bottom plow. Uh, this is considered a three bottom uh, plow tractor, although depending on you know what the soil is, that may or may not be the case. But uh, I just like the idea. I was originally looking for a Super C. Well, that's what I would get, and, I, and then this thing popped onto the radar, and I knew about it, and I knew uh, about them, so I jumped on it, and uh, I'm glad I did. This is a more of a tractor than a Super C could ever want to be, but uh, I want, when I was thinking about Super C, I was thinking, you know, it would be cool to have a Super C and do a little plowing up here and disking uh, to the extent we don't uh, mine rocks by the train load. But uh, so I want to find a plow and a disc and maybe a few other implements uh, for this thing. And that's, that's kind of a long term uh, deal. I want to uh, I want to I want to get a three point hitch adapter that plugs in to the fast hitch. I don't want to disassemble or convert this fast hitch at all. I want it. I want this fast hitch completely original, and I hope you can see, the sun's kind of glary up there, but uh, I want it completely original uh, as far as that goes. And uh, and then I want to make a plate. Uh, I haven't measured it, but presumably the distance from this hole to this PTO shaft is like 14 and a half inches, whatever the ASE spec for a PTO shaft. But on my John Deere baler, I have a equal angle hitch. Since there's no traditional draw bar here, uh, what I want to do is I want to have a plate made that will bolt up here and here, here and here, and it'll extend out. And what that equal angle hitch does, it puts the center of the PTO shaft between the yokes on the baler side and the tractor side and uh, you can go into a tight turn and you don't get such chatter and uh, so the angle on each end of the PTO is equal so uh, it takes a lot of the stress out of making a turn and of course this thing can turn really really tight so what I want to do is get a heavy plate made that comes out here and basically all I need is a uh, uh, oh, uh, like a like on a you know like on a, a plow or a disc they got a, uh, a, a struggle for words sometimes uh, they've got a uh, hold on one of these things and I want to and I can bolt that vertically onto that plate in the same position as it does on the equal angle hitch. And I'll basically have an equal angle hitch for this tractor. And I can, and I can put my John Deere baler on it. Not that we're gonna bail heavy hay. It's just something I wanna try. Uh, it would be fun to run this uh, 350 on that uh, John Deere with the kicker in the wagon. And I think it can handle it. Uh, am I gonna kill it? No, but am I, would I like to run it? Yeah. So that's one of the things I want to do. I don't have any plans on changing any of the tires, even though they're kind of dry rotted, especially these front ones. Uh, so I want to, I'm just going to run them until they just fail, I guess. And I want to get a, uh, a belt pulley and bolt to that. I, I think. Uh, we have a hammer mill up there in that old barn. Uh, my brother and I have talked about putting a belt on it and just trying it out for kicks. Uh, also, I need to get a temperature gauge. Uh, 
the temperature gauge does not work on this tractor, nor does the tack. So I need a tack cable, and I may need a temperature gauge with a cable. Uh, I just haven't got that far with it. So that's one of the things I want to do. Uh, the narrow front, I don't really have any plans on putting a wide front on this tractor. They look really cool, I think, with or without the wide front. And, uh, uh, you know, obviously I'd be running over some hay, but some people say, like, I mean, I'm going to try this thing on the round baler when I get it. It's a 4x4 four four round baler, and uh, I, I, they, some people say they like a narrow front tractor on a round baler because on one of the older round balers, which is, you know, what I'm, uh, you know, which is what I'm uh, buying. They don't require as much horsepower, but in any event, it kind of mashes that wind road down and it doesn't bunch up under the back end of the tractor and uh, in, into the front of the baler. So some people actually kind of like a narrow front for that reason alone. But what I like about the narrow front is two things. One of them is the maneuverability on this tractor is just unbelievable with that narrow front. You see, you can turn so tight it's just such a, it makes such a nimble tractor. Now, obviously, I'm not going to get on the hill with it and go around the side, go around the side of hills, and we may not get on the hill with it at all. I'm not even ready for that right now. So, uh, but I would like to keep the narrow front, and if a wide front fell in my hands and it was cheap and complete, I would, uh, I would consider buying it. Uh, some of those wide fronts are almost as expensive as the tractor, so uh, I can get along okay with a narrow front on this Farmall 350. Uh, let's see, the lights. So right now I've got a six volt system. It, this is a 58, 58, 1958 year model, and it's a late 16,000. Uh, it's a late serial number in that it's in the 16,000 serial number range. This thing should have been 12 volt negative ground. Uh, I'm happy as a clam with the six volt on this one. It starts like a champ. They saw my video with the lights working. Uh, you know, I'm okay with six volt except for one thing. And that is, we have uh, uh, monitors for the baler and, uh, you know, a moisture meter. And then we have a, a pump uh, for hay preservative. And that's, you know, that's 12 volt positive. That's, I said 12 volt. This is six volt positive ground. And uh, it should have came 12 volt positive ground. So I would consider converting this thing to 12 volt negative ground because of the instruments and the motor on my hay preservative. Also, uh, People say you need to put LEDs on them. Uh, I don't mind LEDs. I don't really like the way they look. I like the looks of a sealed beam light. But uh, you know, if I could find, if I did convert it to 12 volt negative ground, and I could find LEDs that were just form fit and functional and they looked good, they weren't like, you know, square and rectangular shaped, they looked exactly like this. I would consider it, uh, but right now I'm happy with the, the six volt system and the lights as it is, but when I do put the baler on this, I would like to have the option of, uh, of uh, being able to run my monitor and my hay preservative applicator. Now uh, this tractor has three remotes, uh, has potential. It has three hydraulic circuits. Maybe that's the way I should say it. When you see those levers, uh, one of the levers is for the hydraulics to lift the fast hitch. So that one's spoken for. The other one is for the hydraulics for this remote. And so the third hydraulic uh, set of hydraulics on this tractor is on the other side, I think. It's not being used. And uh, it's, 
piped out here, there it is, it's plugged on. But it's not being used and the other one's plugged on that side. I would like to take that and put a second remote out here. The reason being is, number one, why not? I'm not using cultivators on this tractor. And number two, the round baler I'm getting uh, is hydraulic tie. So it'd be nice uh, to run that little four by four on this. Again, just for kicks uh, and be able to open the gate and also do the hydraulic tie with the hydraulics that are on this tractor. So that's something I want to do. Uh, I need to uh, fix the glass on the on the gas gauge up here, and that may require buying another one of these. But that was an option on these tractors. It's got a cork in there and a twisted wire that just like on an old garden tractor uh, gas gauge. So I need to do that, and uh, of course, uh, fluid changes all around. And uh, I need a new seat cover. I'd like to get a nice one. I don't want some, you know, junky import that'll last about a year and start cracking up. And uh, I don't know what's available. I will say that on these farm halls, there's just an immense amount of info across the internet on them. And, uh, it's just been really impressive, the amount of information, uh, the, even that's applicable from the H uh, and the Super H, the M's and the Super N's, uh, to this tractor. So I feel like in a lot of ways International was at their pinnacle when they made these uh, 50 series tractors and 400, uh, uh, 400, 300, 350, and 400 series tractors. Uh, they were just uh, really, uh, I, can't, I just can't imagine what it would have been like on the farm, uh, you know, with, with one of these things brand new. I only got a few minutes left on my card on this thing. I appreciate you watching. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get up on here and just kind of tool around some and I'll take you along and uh, we'll talk to you later. I get just a little bit of smoke after it's been sitting, idling for a little bit, and then it clears up. Probably needs an engine rebuild or rings or something, I don't know. Oh, we'll take care of all that stuff over time. This is like my four-wheeler, you know. Everybody's got a four-wheeler and my son's got one and uh, my brother's got one, but I just sit right on this thing. All right, I'm about out. We'll talk to you later.